This is the part of the beach where that massive wall of water came to shore. That earthquake struck out there to sea and the tsunami came in and this is where it hit 500 miles an hour. And this beach is basically in, completely stripped of life. There were homes here. And as you walk through all this stuff, bits of plank and wood and upturned roots of trees and building materials, you see little hints of people's lives. So a fridge door over there, a handbag, a cuddly toys of kids. People lived here. And to, to witness something which is basically just annihilated life along the coast is quite something. And if you think about the topography of this part of uh, Palu, it's kind of in a cove. And when that earthquake hit and the water came towards this place, it really funneled down into where we are now. So most of Palu actually wasn't hit that badly, but this bit was basically entirely wiped off the map. Um, and so there's a rather sad image now of people walking along the beach, picking through, seeing what they can find. Many of them will have lived here, some of them perhaps not. Um, but this is what remains of life here. And there will be questions to answer for the government because there was supposed to be a warning system. Let's just try and cross this road without getting killed. Um, it was supposed to be a warning system. It was instituted in 2004 after the massive tsunami uh, in this part of the world. But one officer from the uh, Indonesian Crisis Mitigation Center has said that the sensors that sit out there in the ocean that detect tidal movement haven't been working properly since 2012. And so people who were on this beach at the time, and we've heard reports there was a beach festival going on, um, wouldn't have been given any warning at all that that water was heading towards them. Um, there should have been sirens go off along this beach. The uh, authorities should have been notified that the water was coming in. Uh, and it seems that that wasn't the case. And now there's a situation where the different authorities are kind of blaming one another. The different kind of agencies that are responsible for these things uh, in Indonesia are now blaming one another. But in the middle of it all, uh, it's people's lives that have been basically wiped away. At the moment, we know 1,400 people at least uh, have died in this, but that number is likely to rise away from here, away from the beach, in the rest of Palu, where the earthquake uh, uh, carried on its effects. Some of those buildings brought right down. Rescuers are still trying to bring people out of the rubble, but it's turning more into a recovery effort than a, than a rescue one now, I think. Um, another massive earthquake and tsunami for Indonesia. And hopefully, I think people here uh, would like to think that some lessons have been learned. I'm James Longwood for ABC News in Indonesia.